A Big Deek News doubleheader on a Monday. Big Deek News. The first bit of news we'll go over briefly is a piece of information we've known is inevitable. We were just waiting for it to become official. And that is linebacker Cole Holcomb has been placed on the IR slash reserve list, consequently ending his 2023 season for the Steelers. We saw his knee injury take place on Thursday Night Football. It was brutal. So prayers up for him. Hopefully it's a speedy recovery and he'll be ready to go for the Steelers in 2024. And in a corresponding move, though, we put Cole Holcomb on IR. We did take a guy off of IR, and that was running back Anthony McFarland. He has been activated to the main roster. So bare minimum, he should help us out in the return game because that was his job before he got injured. He was our main kick return man, and he was doing, dare I say, a damn good job. We've had Gunner take over for that in the meantime and since then he's got cut and we also had the former lions running back godwin iguabuke take over for return man duties like these last like what two or three games and at least he hasn't fumbled or done anything stupid like gunner but anthony mcfarland should be taking that over and hopefully will be an upgrade over both of those guys one just in the ball security department but he should be able to provide more splash than Iguabuke because McFarlane was doing that. He was having some nice returns, man. And then who knows what happens with the running backs uh, over these last couple weeks. It seems like, at least in the Rams game and then also in last week's game against the Titans, we have a good little one-two punch going with Warren and Najee. So I don't know where McFarlane could find himself in that mix, but... We'll see. Doesn't hurt to have him back, though. In other news, former Steelers receiver Martavis Bryant has been officially reinstated by the NFL. This ends uh, almost five-year drought of him not being able to play in the league. Going back to 2018, I think it was December 2018, he was suspended indefinitely. And since then, he has dabbled in some other football leagues. Most recently, this last spring, played in the XFL for the Las Vegas Vipers. Also messed around with the fan-controlled football league, you know, that one that had Manziel playing for a little bit, T.O. Also made an appearance there, but nothing came of that. But yeah, as of right now, Martavis, who is 31, about to turn 32 in December, is free to play in the National Football League if one of the 32 teams end up signing him. Most recently, a report came out saying that he is due to work out with the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know if that has already happened yet or not, but... Maybe something happens there, but obviously, obviously with this news breaking, Steeler fans are posing the question, should the Steelers and Martavis Bryant have a reunion? And my response can be summed up like this. Y'all know that ain't happening. Not only is this not happening, to be honest with you, I don't think we even want it to happen because last he was seen on the football field, it was in the XFL for the Vipers and he was supposed to be not only the best receiver on his team but probably the best receiver in the league him or Josh Gordon right because both those dudes when they played in the top football league in the world in National Football League were awesome but with the Vipers Martavis was pretty much a no-show not yeah he wasn't the number one on his team in fact he was probably like the third or fourth maybe even fifth best receiver on their squad so what do you think he's gonna do in the national football league right now and you know he's 31 30 gonna be 32 it's tough because the dude has so much talent there was uh one social media post that i saw recently and a couple of the hosts were going back and forth and questioning like if you had to pick one football player go back in time and you could redo their career over who would it be and as Steeler fans, Martavis Bryant is obviously in like the top two or three. The guy was an absolute stud. So there's a little bit of nostalgia there. There's a little bit of that sentimental tie that we have to Martavis. But that was a while ago. And I just don't think it's reality for what he is right now as a football player. So we should just let that be in the past. I just think we got a good thing going right now with this Steelers team. Not only as a whole, but this offense is trending in the right direction. I know we talked about the pick-in stuff and some of the drama in the last video, but if anything, that goes to my point as to why you don't really need to bring a Martavis Bryant in here because 
Last time we saw him with the Steelers, he wasn't happy with his targets and usage with us having an AB and a Juju on this team. So I just don't think it's needed right now. Why rock the boat when it doesn't really need rock? We'll keep the past in the past and keep moving forward. Last topic before I sign off here. This one's more of a, a little fun segment to react to. LeBron James, you guys might know who he is, compared his team, the Los Angeles Lakers, to the Pittsburgh Steelers in a recent little media interview that he did post-game. Have a listen. The early starts have been the same issues, the turnovers and the defensive rebounding. To, I think you guys have been down double digits all the one game so far in the first quarter. Yeah, we're like the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. You know what that means? No, the Pittsburgh Steelers right now have not uh, outgained or outscored any of their opponents in this season right now, and yet they got a winning record. Uh, how have we been outscored by every team, yet somehow we have five wins? But I get what he's saying. He's probably talking about the total point differential when you add all of our games up. I believe we are in the negatives. We are outscored uh, when you add everything up, but yet we're still five and three. Also have been outgained. Yet we are still five and three. That's what it comes down to. Winning ain't everything. Winning is the only thing. And the Steelers are finding ways to win. Now, those first four or five weeks, there were some wins like the Browns game and Ravens game that I thought to myself, like, this is cool. I'm glad that we got the win because it's going to add up as the season goes on. But this isn't a sustainable way to win games because our offense is barely crossing the 50 yard line and our defense is scoring more points than our offense. But since the bye, Let's give the squad some credit, man, because the offense is picking it up. I think if Kenny Pickett would have stayed healthy in the Jaguars game, we would have came out of that one with a victory. But yeah, I think things are moving in the right direction. And I'm taking what LeBron has to say here as a positive because the Lakers themselves, I guess, are finding ways to win. Although I just checked the record. They're three and three, so they don't have a complete winning record. I don't know when he did this interview exactly. But what do we typically expect? the Lakers to do especially when you have LeBron James and Anthony Davis on your team they're going to be a top four or five squad in the Western Conference probably be contenders to make it to the Western Conference Finals potentially the NBA Finals so if we're gonna do the comparison I'll take it because that means you know we're finding ways to win right now early in the season but when it comes down to it we're gonna be a team to be reckoned with in the playoffs and who knows you get into the dance and anything can happen might just make a run. But that's it for this edition of Big Deek News, the second Big Deek News on a Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on some of the topics discussed on today's show. Stay chilling and peace.